what is going on my creatures of the night it is good to see each and every one of you again this is episode two of the wrestling heat wave a semi-regular regularly semi-regular wrestling news show i guess you want to call it i don't know um i just wanted to um talk talk about wrestlemania wrestlemania 40 I did indeed watch it, and I uh, enjoyed it very much. We'll dive into that a little bit. And just some other things going on. WWE's got a bit of a new era thing going on. Wanted to tap into the uh, unfortunate AEW situation. And uh, just some... That's that's kind of what we're going to dive into here. So WrestleMania 40 was good. It was really good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I loved uh, the story of Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Um, Rhea Ripley is a fucking megastar. She had Motionless and White play her to the ring, which is really awesome. Great match. Rhea Ripley went over. It was awesome. It was, uh, it was really good to see. Um, the tag team ladder match. Oh my god. I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't remember the order of all the matches. I'm just gonna talk about them various, like here and there. I don't know. The tag team ladder match was a car crash, overbooked in a good way, kind of a fun match. The ladders, uh, something was going on with the ladders. Uh, They were caving in, breaking. At one point it looked like they're like, they don't look like metal ladders. They're spray painted with like a metal collar, but I don't know what material they are, but they're, it's a fairly weak material. (laughs) But yeah, other than that, that was a that was a crazy match. Um, one match I wasn't too crazy about was Jimmy versus Jay, the Usos. I I just felt like we needed a bit more. I felt like the match could have gone on a bit longer, a bit more emotions, a bit more storytelling, kind of like what the Bloodline normally does. Like you've seen Roman Reigns fight Jay Uso, you've seen. You've seen bloodline matches where there's so much emotion and story um, dr- dr- driven into the uh, performance, but this match just kind of fell flat a little. I don't know. I'm glad that the two brothers got to fulfill their lifelong dream of fighting each other at WrestleMania, um, WrestleMania 40 of all of them. But yeah, it wasn't a bad match, but it could have been better. Um, LA Knight and AJ Styles too, I felt like could have gone on a little longer. Um, those two put on one, a pretty good match. I think anyone who wrestles AJ Styles can, can have a good match. Um, I mean, with the exception of Shinsuke Nakamura and, and I mean, well, they've had good matches, they've had bad matches, but I think anyone in most situations who has a match with, with AJ Styles is bound to have a good match. And LA Knight is still over as fuck. Um, LA Knight is still... He still has the crowd in the palm of his hands. Um, I would love to see a segment with him and The Rock, with The Rock being back. We'll uh, we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, I would love to see a segment with him and The Rock one day. That would be that would be awesome. <laughs> They're both uh, very charismatic. Well, The Rock always, has always been charismatic, but um, yeah, they're both very charismatic. Um, but no, Ellie Knight and AJ Styles felt like the match could have been ten minutes longer. Um, but they, it's, it still wasn't a bad match. There wasn't really anything that was, like, dog shit on this show. It was all pretty solid. Like, even the women's matches, Bailey and Eagle Sky was a really good match. Holy fuck, Jade Cargill, uh, Bianca Belair, and Naomi. When Jade got into that ring, oh my god, it was insane. Um, the tag team match, The Rock, Roman, Rollins, and um, uh, Cody Rhodes... That, that was actually surprisingly really good. The match went 45 minutes. And, man, The Rock can still go. He can still sell. He can still present in-ring psychology. It was it was a great match. I, I know The Rock... I have a feeling The Rock's going to come back at some point. Um, but if that ends up... Like, I, I was saying on... Uh, when I was watching WrestleMania, I said, man, if that ends up being The Rock's last match, that is a hell of a match to go out on. Um, I don't think it is, though. I think The Rock's got a few more in him. Um, he's been very good. Like, him being back and involved with the bloodline and stuff. Well, 
we'll tap into that. We'll we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, I apologize if I'm missing any if I'm missing out on any matches. Uh, so Rollins got the living shit beat out of him uh, on night one in the tag team match. Goes into night two, loses the title to Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins. Uh, that was a, that was a really good uh, good match. They had a bit of an emotional moment when Seth walked out of the uh, out of the ring. I think Seth's going to take some well-deserved time off. I do think he he could use it, and I think it would be good for him. He they overuse the word workhorse, but he he really is a workhorse in in the company. Um, man, Drew fucking boasting, bragging, holding the title in front of CM Punk, and then you have CM Punk take his fucking um, thing off for his tricep. And just beat the shit out of Drew McIntyre. And then Damian Priest comes in, cashes in the money in the bank, and steals the world title from Drew McIntyre. That I loved it. It was great. It was great. I love Damian Priest is fucking awesome. Uh, it's so cool to see him holding a world title. It was cool that Drew had his moment in front of the crowd, but then it got taken away from him because <laughs> of CM Punk. And I think that's going to build towards uh, Drew and Punk. When uh, whenever Punk is cleared to wrestle, we don't really know when when that's happening. Well, I'll dive into that later. Um, yeah, no, it was just fucking crazy, man. Like, I don't think yeah, there wasn't a single bad match on the WrestleMania card. The women's matches were great. Um, Gunther and Sami Zayn, that was the one I forgot to talk about. Gunther and Sami Zayn. Holy shit, I, I came into that match not really thinking Sami Zayn would win, wasn't really behind him, felt like Gunther would keep going, 666 day uh, title reign, uh, Sami was able to get the crowd invested into him, um, get, get the match fucking going, the storytelling, emotion, psychology, by the time we got to the end of the match... I cared about it more. I I enjoyed it more. What a fucking match. That that would have that would be one of my favorites on 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 the card. Main event, Cody versus Roman Reigns. Oh my god. What a fucking match. Very emotional by the end of it. You know, you're you've got the rock getting involved, you got Cena coming out, Cena facing the rock. And then the lights go out, and it's the fucking Undertaker, and the rocks, the look on the rock's face when he turns around and sees the dead man, and then, yeah, just, and then S.H.I.E.L.D., Seth Rollins coming out in the S.H.I.E.L.D. gear. At first, I didn't really understand what was going on there, but now I kind of get it. Roman wanted to hit Rollins in the back with the chair, come full circle ten years later. I, you, people often forget that there's a story here with Roman and Seth as well. It's not just Roman and Cody or The Rock and Cody or The Rock and Roman. Roman and Seth go way back. So it was cool to see that kind of come into play. Seth saying he'll be Cody's shield and then him coming out in the shield year. I thought for a second John Moxley was going to come out. <laughs> I think a lot of people did. But um, yeah, what a fucking match. And by the end of it, Cody beating Roman... We went from, man, Roman needs to lose the title, man, like, to, holy fuck, thank you, Roman. Like, you had one hell of a title reign. He did. He had a historic title reign. Um, Didn't wrestle a lot, but, man, when you look back, like, it's been, what, almost four years now he had that title. Three and a half years. And... Cody winning, and then all the boys coming out and holding him up. Triple H coming out, giving him a hug. Bruce Pritchard coming out. The show ended with the commentators very emotional, saying, um, pro wrestling is back. Pro wrestling is beautiful. And that, like, I teared up when, like, by the end of, of that. It was absolutely beautiful. It really, like, WrestleMania 40 was amazing. Um... It really seems like WWE has kind of entered a new era. And I know they've been pushing that like marketing wise. They've been big on that. They've been talking they've been saying we're in a new era, new era, new era. They um they always do that. 
if you go back to the new generation era in the mid 90s oh you know vince like oh it's the new generation wwf attitude i grew up during that time and you know how many fucking commercials oh wwf attitude get it ruthless aggression not as much pg era not as much but you know when they are in a new era they really um promote it that way but i honestly think wwe has been in this new era for a while now i think summer of 2022 when the vince allegations and it sucks that this was in my opinion what stemmed all of this but the vince allegations when the hush money thing started and all of that um that's when I feel like when Triple H first had control of creative and then I think it was SummerSlam 2022 where he started to book. Um, it was Triple H uh, doing creative. Stephanie was CEO. Nick Khan. I don't know what goes on but like in the corporate world. But um, yeah, I, I feel like since then we've kind of been in this new era. Um, but then, like, if you look back at the Attitude era, era, everyone says it started when Austin won the title. I think it started before that. I think it started late 1996, 1997. I think that's what kind of stemmed it. And that's that's what I'm saying about this era, is 2022, I think, kind of was the root of it. And I think we've been in that era for a little while now. We've had new stars. We've had... Fans getting back into the show. WWE signed a crazy deal with Netflix to have Raw on Netflix next year. What a fucking time to be a wrestling fan, man. Like, The Rock is back. He's on board. We've got Cody Rhodes. You've got... When you think of all the stars, I think I said this on the last episode. When you think of all the stars, you've got fucking... A whole, like... I, th- I may have said this on the previous episode, but when I, I think of like the 2008 WWE roster, you had Triple H, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio, JBL, Batista, John Cena, um, so many more. You just had endless, you just endless amounts of talent. You had like stacked cards, like match cards. That's how it feels now. Like, right now, we've got Drew McIntyre. We've got CM Punk. We've got Jey Uso. We've got LA Knight. We've got Cody Rhodes. We've got The Bloodline. We've got... Oh, my God, so many more. It's just... It's crazy how they've elevated these guys to be, like, top guys. Sheamus just came back, too, which is... It's cool. They brought his old theme song back, which I really... uh, I was really happy about. But, yeah. No, I, like... WrestleMania 40 is, like, where they stamp it as new era, but we've been in a new era for a little while now, and it's been great. Wrestling is is hot as hell right now, and it has been for a little while. Sold-out arenas, increasing ratings, it's crazy. Um, Triple H is doing some awesome things for pro wrestling. I don't know what to call this era. People are calling it the Renaissance era... Part of me calls it the post-Vince era, but that's a little bit of a negative stamp, and I don't really want to uh, stick to that. Um, But it kind of is the post-Vince McMahon era. But um, no, like, the Renaissance era is a a cool term. Uh, I think of of classical music when when I think of that, or, like, you know, that type of shit, but... I don't know, like, people are leaning towards that, I mean, what, okay, like, when when you look at WWE as a whole, company history, there's the golden era, 80s, early 90s, there's the new generation era, horrible, um, I'm gonna do a video one day where I rank all the eras, but there was the new generation era, which was, like, mid-90s, um, I want to say like 93 to 96, maybe up until when Shawn Michaels, I think dropped the uh, title, the psycho Sid. um, specifically when I think of things like that, I would say would be, um, 
or when when Austin won King of the Ring, one of those one of those two would be like end of new generation era. Um, Attitude era, obviously like ninety seven, ninety eight to two thousand one, maybe maybe a little bit of two thousand two. Um, ruthless aggression era, two thousand two to two thousand eight. Um, great great time. I grew up during attitude era, ruthless aggression era. Um, I grew up during kind of both those times. PG era, ugh. Um, early 2010s, like, when I think PG era, I think of, like, the Nexus. I think of, like, you know, the guest hosts on Monday Night Raw. I don't, I don't remember what year that was. I think of Shawn Michaels retiring. I think of, um... John Cena still being a top guy. Randy Orton being a top guy. Top babyface, I think, at that point. CM Punk dropping the pipe bomb. Um, you could say is part of the PG era. Then there's the reality era, which doesn't get talked about a lot. And they literally branded it the reality era, which was, like... I don't know when it started. and like I don't want to say, like... 2013 to like 2016 it, it was like the new generation era a very short-lived very centered around the authority and daniel bryan um then there was the new era which i don't know they nobody ever called it anything nobody ever had a name for it like this was like the 2016 the smackdown live the um the, yeah, SmackDown Live, the Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, Universal Title Reign, Roman Reigns, the Big Dog, God Awful Television in 2018 and 2019, some of wrestling's worst years, I think, for especially for Monday Night Raw. Um, that's what I think of when I think of that new era. Um, and then, yeah, up until, well... I don't know if the, the COVID era counts under the new era. I don't know. Um, yeah, and then we're in this era. So, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I, Renaissance era is cool. Like, wrestling is cool again. Sure, yeah. Roll with that. I mean, long-time fans like me have always loved wrestling, but er, there's been times where wrestling sucked, and there's been times where it's been cool. I don't know. But yeah, no, anyways... Um, it does, it does feel like we're in this new era. Triple H has got a whole team. Like, the te the presentation, the television presentation, new camera stuff, graphics, um, the way they do the arenas. Every pay-per-view feels big. Like, story-driven, long-term storytelling, build-up. Like, it's, it's, it's really cool to see, like, what's happening and I think it's just going to keep going up and I hope it does I hope we can stay in this era for as long as fucking possible I think that would be sick because when you think of the Attitude Era it didn't last that long when you think of the Ruthless Aggression Era it lasted very long you know but like yeah we, it does feel like we're in another boom period going to Monday Night Raw like past couple Raws after WrestleMania and SmackDown after WrestleMania have been good. It's kept you interested. I find sometimes post-WrestleMania, I would kind of, like, fall off a bit, you know, kind of lose that uh, interest. Not so much lose interest, but, like, you know what I mean. Um, I would kind of, yeah, just not watch as much, kind of wait till like, SummerSlam until something good happens, but they're, they're doing a really good job at keeping you invested in the product and growing and keeping the story going. Um, I think The Rock is going to come back at some point. I think they're, at some point, maybe SummerSlam, they're going to do The Rock versus Cody Rhodes. For the Universal title. one That one-on-one -on -one match. And then I think with what's going on with the Bloodline. 
Tama Tonga just debuted, and they turned on Jimmy Uso. I think they're kind of stemming, or they're not, not, I don't even know if stemming's a word. I think they're kind of uh, planting the seeds for a bloodline civil war. I think we got the Rock's bloodline faction against a returning babyface Roman, Roman Reigns bloodline faction. I think that would be pretty cool. And I think with Tama Tonga showing up, with them turning on the Uso, or on Jimmy Uso, I think at some point the Usos are going to get back together. I think when we get Rock versus Cody at SummerSlam, I think Roman's going to come back. And I think that's going to uh, plant the seeds for Roman and Rock, Bloodline Civil War. Going all the way to next year's WrestleMania, we finally get the fucking Roman versus Rock match. And this time, people are actually going to want to see it. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking long-term storytelling here. Year worth of build-up, but you're interested the whole way. And I think Cody is going to move on to something else. That being said, we'll see where it goes when it comes to the, to the Bloodline story. It sucks. I watched Raw last night, and it sucks that Rhea Ripley's injured. It really sucks. She had she had a long title reign. It was about a year, I believe. Um, I wanted to see her keep going. I really did. It really fucking sucks when a wrestler gets injured and they have to give up their title. They don't get that proper storybook storybook ending to their title reign it's just it's all kinds of suck there's no, nothing else really you can say about it um i hope she recovers and i hope uh she, I, I hope she does well um they still got stuff going on with the judgment day though damien priest having the world title is pretty cool um i kind of want to see where that goes um Jey Uso versus Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Champion. That's going to be pretty cool. I think Drew's going to somehow get back involved and maybe even win the title back when they go to Scotland. That would be sick. I don't know. Um, you don't have a lot of short title reigns in Triple H's uh, era, you know? <laughs> so, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Um, CM Punk, like I said earlier... I think, you know, maybe in the next few months he'll be cleared to wrestle again. And I'm thinking we obviously got to do Punk and Drew McIntyre. But I'm thinking during that feud, maybe Seth Rollins comes back. And we get the Rollins and Punk feud after that, that, that we've been wanting to see. I'm thinking maybe next year's WrestleMania, Rollins versus Punk, or maybe even at SummerSlam. All depends on when Punk is cleared to wrestle. Rollins versus Punk, either SummerSlam or WrestleMania. If it's at, okay, let's just let's just say it's at WrestleMania. Rollins versus Punk, main event, night one WrestleMania. Punk finally gets the fucking main event. And night two, Roman versus Rock. I don't know what Cody's going to be doing by that point. Don't know who's going to win the Royal Rumble. There's so many, again, there's so many top guys in the company now. Uh, maybe L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight, I think he has, uh, I think he has potential of being like a, a, you know, rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin level star. I do. He's doing the Slim Jim commercials. He's, he's fucking charismatic as fuck. Maybe do him versus Cody next year. But we'll see where it all goes. But now, speaking of uh, CM Punk, oh man. I'm not an AEW fan. I was an AEW fan when they first started. Um, there's been some AEW matches that I've loved. I've loved. I loved the CM Punk MJF feud. I loved the Jericho and MJF feud with the Inner Circle. That was like during COVID. I think it was that. That was that. That feud. Um, I loved Kenny Omega. And Hangman Adam Page versus the Young Bucks. 
at the first, I think it was AEW Revolution, the one where Moxley won the title off Jericho. That was uh, a good match. Pack versus uh, who was it? Um, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega versus Pack at uh, the first All Out was pretty cool. Like there's AEW. How do I put this in words? They're a company, a fairly green company, a fairly new company. The company has only been around for four or five years. Four or five years is not a long time to, for a company, for a wrestling company. WWE has been around for over 50 years. Impact has been around for fucking, I think like 22 years now. WCW was around for over 15 years. More. NWA has been around God knows how long. I don't know the exact numbers here, but... AEW is only five years old. And... I feel like they're biting off more than they can chew. They think that they are on the level of companies like WWE. And at one point, maybe, yeah, they were putting out good stuff. But there's been a lot of dog shit. Especially recently. Punk situation. Some, some people may hate me for this. But I side with Punk. Uh, when it comes to this whole AEW thing, the whole thing with Colt Cabana, it wasn't right for the Young Bucks to fucking go and, and and spread shit. It wasn't right for Hangman Adam Page to go off script or go into the business for himself, as they say, on, on a live mic with CM Punk. I actually, I support that. Like, I support Punk when it comes to that, because that, that, was, that was fucked up. You know? You don't bury your top fucking draw, you know? The fact that Punk had to go on this post-match press conference, or whatever the fuck you call it, and have to explain his situation with Colt Cabana, and have to go off about the elite and, and stuff, and then there was the whole brawl out thing that happened that none of them are allowed to talk about. Fucking, oh my god, like, it's just... Since that, since the brawl out, I think AEW has just been fucking a wasteland, in my opinion. Um, I may get a lot of hate for saying that, but I honestly don't give a fuck. It's my opinion. Um, you, you guys want to be AEW fanboys? Go, uh, go ahead. By all means. You can be a fan of whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not a fan. Um, <laughs> the Jack Perry situation, that's a whole other fucking mess. And Punk was right. Jack Perry's a young kid in a locker room with veterans. You should maybe listen to these guys. Take advice from them. These young fucking guys in AEW think they know everything about the wrestling business and think that they don't need to take advice from from veterans. From, from guys that have been around 20, 30 years. They, I don't know. From what I've, he what I've heard, the locker room is just full of just toxicity and and young fucking naive little I don't know these guys wouldn't survive a, a pro wrestling locker room in, in in the 90s you know um imagine being in a locker room with Bradshaw imagine Jack Perry and the Young Bucks being in a locker room with Bradshaw I, I'd pay to see that um but no Punk was Punk was right I saw the interview that he did with uh, Ariel Helwani I, I saw the interview I saw Punk's side of things and I don't think Punk did anything wrong. I think Jack Perry added fuel to the fire. The fucking, oh, real glass. Like, it's just fucking, he's being stupid. Like, he's being a young, stupid kid. You know? But I think it was very low and very desperate and incredibly immature for AEW to air the the CCTV footage of the fight with CM Punk and, and Jack Perry. I don't think that was necessary. I think responding to something that one of your former talent said in an interview by going on national fucking television and airing 
footage from something that happened months ago. And not just that, the footage just shows that CM Punk was fucking right. It shows that he was fucking right. The way he described it... That's like... it. Literally, that's what you see on the fucking... In the fucking footage. And Punk doesn't work for the company anymore. Jack Perry doesn't work for the company anymore. So what the fuck do they gain from doing that? You got people on the show chanting CM Punk's name now. You just... Like, this, Tony Khan, Tony Clown, I call him. Fucking... He, he is just... Oh my god, just... He needs to shut the fuck up and just be a fucking promoter. Stop fucking tweeting. Stop doing this stupid shit. I don't know. I'm at a loss for words, honestly. I think it turned me off from the company to see that they they aired that footage. It turned me off completely. It was a big... They should... going Like, why do they care what Punk says in an interview? It's so stupid, man. The whole situation. It's so fucking stupid. Like, WWE is is not, no saint either. Like, back in the 90s, um, when Hogan and Savage left, they threw shade at Hogan and Savage and, and those guys all the time. Like, I'm not saying WWE's perfect. But do you really think that, like, if a former WWE guy went and did an interview and talked about WWE... And let's say there was something that happened backstage and WWE had the footage of it. Do you think WWE would be the type of company to air that footage on TV knowing that they can't do anything out of that? They can't create anything out of that? It's like, it just, it goes to show you. Young Bucks, fucking Hangman, Tony Khan, they're all just immature. They should not be running a wrestling company. Tony Khan needs to fucking hire some fucking executives. Some people that actually know what the fuck they're doing. He needs to hand like like Punk said in his interview, he didn't handle situations, so Punk had to handle them. Like this whole situ it was unnecessary to air that footage. That's all I'm saying. It was completely unnecessary. It turned me off from the company completely. And it isn't just, like, that situation. It's the fact that they have all this talent on their roster and they barely utilize half that talent. They have way too much TV time. I'm sorry, but, like, um, unless you got separate rosters like Raw and SmackDown, who the fuck wants to go and watch AEW Dynamite and then watch AEW Rampage on Friday and then watch AEW Collision on Saturday. And you're still... You have three shows weekly and you're still underutilizing talent. But no. Let's bring the fucking EVPs out there and fucking air fucking drama. Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of pissed off talking about this, but like... You, like... Why? Why did they have to do that? It makes no sense. You can't build anything out of that. Punk's gone. Jack Perry's gone. And, and the footage just, it makes Punk look better. You got you had people chanting CM Punk's name after that on your show. What the fuck do you think you were going to accomplish with that? I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to get too far into that. But um, yeah, it just sucks, man. AEW has or had a lot of potential. But they're a company that's definitely bitten off more they can, than, than they can chew. And it shows. It really shows. But yeah, no, other than that, like, WWE's doing great, TNA, Impact, they're doing good things. I don't watch them as much as I used to, but um, it's it's just a good time for, for wrestling right now. There's so much product out there. Whether you like AEW or not, it's available, <laughs> you know, it's an alternative. WWE is doing the best shit that they've done in years. It's It's just a good time to be a wrestling fan. But yeah, no, I uh, I uh, talked about a lot on this episode, and yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I made the last video, I think maybe two, three or four weeks. So I want to talk about WrestleMania 40, I wanted to talk about everything, you know, recently, and yeah. Um, it's cool that they brought back the World Tag Team Champions. Uh, hopefully they'll, in the future, Triple H will 
have some more cool uh, belt designs and stuff. Kind of want to see the winged eagle belt come back. But yeah, no, that, that was, I forgot to mention that earlier. But yeah, no, um, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk either next week or a couple weeks. We'll see. Well, you know, we'll watch the few next few Raws and Smackdowns and even AEW. And, and then, and then we'll talk again. I appreciate you guys sitting here for 35 minutes listening to me rant. This has been episode two of the Wrestling Heat Wave. Thank you guys for watching. Rock on.